So let's talk about a change in internal energy for the, a reaction. Okay. All right, so here's an important reaction that's going on. All right. So everybody's doing this right now. You're using glucose, you're metabolizing glucose to form CO2 and water, right? Okay, and if we balance it, throw some sixes in front. All right, so if this is our reaction, this is our system, okay? Why are you doing this? Wait, question. Well, it's a, um, you can do it right now when your body produces it, it's dissolved in water, it's in your, it's in your blood, in your tissues, in your skin, so you can say it's aqueous, it's dissolved CO2. That's not enough, not important for this though. Okay. So why are we doing this? To make energy. What's that? To make energy. To make energy. So, okay, so we use it to get energy, all right? So if we're getting energy from this reaction, what's going on with the reaction? Is the reaction, the system, is that gaining or losing energy? The if we're gaining it, if okay, we're gaining energy, what's happening with the reaction, the system? Losing. It's losing energy, okay? So it is losing energy, okay? <laughs> so this is the system, this is our reaction, the reaction is our system. Hmm. Have I used all my colors? I think I have. Okay. All right, so this is our reaction, our system. And the energy is coming to us, the surroundings. Okay. And for some reason, I have freakishly long arms. Okay. I think the long arms sh shouldn't be that long. Okay. So we're the surroundings in this case. All right, so that's why we do this reaction to get energy from it, okay? So if the reaction, if the system is losing energy, what is the sign of the change in energy for the system? Positive is one possibility, negative is the other. I heard both. Negative. So, okay. Well, let, let's, maybe we'll start over here by us, okay? We said we do this. Ooh. Nobody look. <laughs> All right. So, I gave it away. All right. So, All right, why are we doing this direction again? To get energy. If we're gaining energy, if we're getting energy, is our change in energy positive or negative? Positive. positive. Okay, so we're gaining energy from this reaction, so it's positive. All right, so the change in energy of the surroundings is positive. So what does that mean for the system? Negative. It has to be negative, okay? <coughs> and it has to be the same, okay? If this reaction is losing you know, 50 joules, we're gaining 50 joules. Okay. And of course, the reason why this is, is sort of the same thing as the ball rolling downhill we talked about yesterday, right? So why does this uh, reaction, why does this system lose energy? Because the, bef the before picture is at the top of the hill, uh -huh. okay? The reactants, my uh, glucose and oxygen, or at the top of the hill. My products, CO2 and water, are at the bottom of the hill. Okay. Now, of course, not because they're higher in position relative to the Earth, it's because they're higher, they're different positions, their electrons are in different positions in their bonds. So the reactants have to be higher potential energy 
than the reactants if we're getting energy out of this. Because if the delta E for the system is negative, okay, and we know that the change in internal energy is final minus initial, the initial has to be higher energy, okay? The energy of the reactants, the initial has to be higher than the final for us to get this energy out of it. And you can even make up numbers to make this make more sense if you need to, okay? So at the top of the hill, they have higher potential energy. Let's say it has 100 joules, okay? 100 joules, just making up energy. I don't know how, many, how much energy you get out per mole of this reaction, but let's just say it has 100 joules. Okay, when we turn in the reactants, it has lower potential energy. So a lower number, let's say 50, right? So 50. So what would be our change in internal energy? It would be final minus initial, right? So delta E, final minus initial. What's my final? 50, my product side, minus what? 100. What's that equal? Negative 50. <coughs> so if that is our values, if those are our values and delta E for the system is negative 50, What's delta E for the surroundings, for us? Positive 50. If the, if the system's losing 50 joules, the surroundings, us, has to gain. Okay? And that just goes back to that um, relationship we just stated, that the change in internal energy of the system equals the change in internal energy of the surroundings, but they're opposite inside. All right. So um, one other thing, when we talk about change in energy or any other change we're gonna eventually talk about for reaction, uh, a lot of times you want to think, okay, we're transferring energy. I hear you know, students talk about transferring energy from the reactants to the products because we've got an arrow going from left to right. That's not our final or, you know, our, where, where energy is going. That is that whole thing, the reaction is our system. And so that is a whole thing can lose or gain energy and that goes to the surroundings, wherever it's happening, okay? So, um, yeah, that's, you're not ever transferring energy from the reactants to the products or vice versa. But what we can say is the reactants are going to be our initial state. Okay, so if you know the potential energy of your reactants, that's my initial state. So I'll just say E sub R sometimes, the energy of the reactants. Okay. And of course, the final potential energy would be the potential energy of our products, because that's what we have at the end of the day. So our energy in the final state, our final energy, can we also just say the potential energy or the internal energy of our products? Which we did. We said the reactants had 100 joules, and our products had 50 joules, and so we calculated change in energy based off that. All right, so what about a, the reverse of this reaction, okay? What would be the change in energy for the reverse of this reaction? Because that might be in trouble. Still want this? Still see writing, okay? So instead of looking at a reaction of you know, glucose plus oxygen going to CO2 and water, what would happen if we're looking at the reverse of this reaction? So CO2 plus water 
going from and, and reacting and making glucose and water. Positive potential energy? I think you're on the right track. So yeah, let's take a look at that. So let's say we got CO2 plus water making glucose C6H12O6 plus oxygen. And of course we gotta balance it. Okay, so now CO2 and water are my reactants. So it's still my, re, uh, it's, but it's still CO2 and water, right? So this will be the energy initially, okay? But since it's still CO2 and water, if we're gonna do a calculation, we should use the numbers we made up for it before, right? So we said that CO2 and water had a potential energy of 50 joules, right? So let's say that they have the same thing here, 50 joules. And of course now, glucose and oxygen are my products, so this would be my final energy. That potential energy, internal energy of my products would be my final state. And of course, since we're just doing this as an example, we should use the numbers we made up. So what would we say for that? We said that glucose and oxygen had 100 joules of energy. Okay, so let's say they have 100 joules now. Okay, so let's calculate change in energy for this. In purple. I think I'm liking the purple the most. It really pops, doesn't it? Okay, so this is my internal energy change for my reaction. It's always going to be final minus initial for whatever we're talking about. And so what's my final energy? 100 joules, right? Minus my initial, you said 50, right? And what does that give us? 100 minus 50? 50, 50 joules. And again, I'm going to emphasize that it is plus 50 joules. Anytime we're talking about change of anything, we should emphasize the sign. So that's, it tells us something. All right, so what's that mean for my reaction or my system? Plus 50 joules, what happened? It gained. It gained, it gained 50 joules, okay? So it definitely gained 50 joules. Where did those joules, where did those 50 joules come from? The surroundings, okay? Do you know of, have you ever seen this reaction before? CO2 plus water gives us glucose and water? Well, who does this? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Plants do this all the time, right? And that's why plants taste so good. They give us oxygen and sugars, glucose, other sugars, all right? So yeah, plants do this reaction all the time. Um, but of course, it's plus an energy change. So it needs energy to do this, okay? If we think about the uphill, downhill scenario, <coughs> we'll see... Uh, um, Glucose and oxygen were at the top of the hill. CO2 and water would be at the bottom of the hill. Okay, we just reversed it, so that's not gonna change. CO2 are our reactants now, but they're at the bottom of the hill. And glucose and oxygen are at the top of the hill. So this would be the opposite. If this reaction wants to happen, and certainly this reaction does happen, it just needs energy to do so. So this time, the system, our reaction, is getting energy from the surroundings, which just so happen to be the sun.
See, it's the little things that I do that make this class so special. Switching pen color to yellow just for the sun, okay? That just, you don't find these kind of details in most other lectures, okay? And then, of course, I lost my, where's my mouse? It ran away from me. Then, of course, whenever you see the sun, okay, you got it, it always has sunglasses on. Okay. Okay, that's the sun. Yeah, so this is what's happening. We're just going from low potential energy to high potential energy. All right, so anyways, <coughs> reactions can't do this, of course, okay? It's like the, you know, going back to the ball rolling downhill, okay? Ball rolls downhill. Can we get the ball back up to the top of the hill? Yeah, you can push the ball back up to the top of the hill, but what's it take? It takes energy. You have to put energy into the ball. You have to put energy into the system to get it back up at the top of the hill to a higher potential energy state. So yeah, reactions can go uphill or downhill. They can go from high potential energy to low potential energy or low potential energy to high potential energy. But of course, if you're going from low potential energy to high potential energy, you need to get energy from somewhere. Okay, the energy from the surroundings is needed for that to happen. Okay.